G'day, my name's David Troy, and this is a David Troy Salon. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how I cut a fringe. Um, I want it to be a bit lived in, I don't want it real blunt, so I'm going to point cut the fringe. Uh, I, look, there's a million different ways of cutting hair, everyone knows that. Is this is just the way I do it, and the way I create a soft, lived in fringe. So, let's jump into the video, I hope you like it. Leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if this is the first time you've come across one of my videos. And um, come back every week and see what I've got going on, that'd be great. So to start with, I've got to determine how thick I want the fringe. Typically I place the comb on top of the head and where the head starts to dip in, that's typically where I know the hair is going to fall forward. So that's where I start my section. Um, you can see right here, it just sort of slightly dips. I know that hair is going to grow forward, it's going to fall forward, so that's where I want to start my fringe. So I take a triangle section, um, I start from where that point is and bring it all the way forward, slightly diagonal forward. You can see I bring it right to the corner of the eyebrow. So that's one side of my triangle, I just repeat the same on the other side, bringing it forward to get that angle and just measure it right off the eyebrow. So as I said earlier on, I want this to look a little bit lived in, I'm going to leave it slightly longer, we're going to connect it to the side, so we're going to have a bit of a face frame as well, but I want it to fall slightly below the eyebrow. Where I start my section is actually in the middle, because I've blow dried it, so the most people's in the middle, it's going to pop up a little bit right here. So I just determine my length by taking that little section in the middle and then slightly start point cutting it in to get the length that I want. Now this is pretty common sense, you leave it longer and work your way up to get your desired length. So once you've got it where you're happy with it, we're going to start connecting it on the side here. So I take that section, you can see here, just double checking, making sure my angle's right. Now my finger placement is important, I'm going to take my finger placement slightly diagonal forward, the same as my sectioning. So let me move this around so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So when I turn it, you can see that um, I'm dragging, over directing that forward just a little bit but I'm taking that section and I'm placing my fingers on the same angle as what I took that section and I'm just going to slightly go in and point cut it and connect the sides. And then pretty straightforward, just repeat the same on the other side. And then we're going to connect it to the face frame. But again, on this one, just make sure your finger placement is at the same angle as what you've taken that um, section to the corner of the eyebrow. And then just softly go in and point cut it all. Now remember, we want this to be a little bit lived in. And what I mean by lived in, we don't want it to look like we've just cut a fringe. We want it to look about a week long or two weeks long. So it's going to be slightly longer. So now to connect it to the side, what I do is I take a section from the top of the head all the way down to the ear and we're just going to bring that straight down. So we want to connect on the sides. Now I don't want her to have little sideburn pieces, you know, I see a lot of people do that. But all we're doing is connecting that side piece to make sure she gets a nice little face frame and it just softens it all the way around. I don't want this fringe to be disconnected. And then I'll just repeat the same on the other side. You can see here, just taking that section straight down, bringing it all forward, and just connecting it to that corner of that fringe. And that's pretty much it. Listen, I really hope you've liked this video. I hope you've got something out of it. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you've tried this on one of your own clients. excited to, to be back on this platform and uploading my own content and doing my own thing. Um, I'm super wrapped that I've met the, you know, 
uh, nearly 4,000 subscribers. My next goal though is 10,000 and I know I'm going to get there. I'm going to keep going with it. Um, but I'm back. So, <laughs> oh jeez. I know I keep saying I'm back and some of you are thinking why did you come back, right? Because it's, you know, it's so much, so much video is uploaded to YouTube. I think it's like 400 hours every three minutes is uploaded to YouTube. So to break into that market is ridiculous, you know, but I'm, I'm going to continue doing what I do because I love it. And that's just it. That's the reason I love videoing. I love doing my own stuff. So anyways, Help me reach that 10,000, you know, 10,000 subscriber milestone. And once we get over that hurdle, we're going to go for 20 and 30 and work our way up. So um, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I would love to get some feedback from you guys that do subscribe to this channel. And tell me a little bit what you think of my videos that I've been uploading. Um, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> let's... Yeah. Blah. Oh, there's so many like things I want to say, but it's so hard just to, you know, because you're talking to a freaking camera, but I know there's someone on the other side of that. Um, even if I hit one person that gets something from my videos, that's good. I love that. So that's really all the bad comments that I read. That one good comment is the one that I'm going to remember. So please leave a comment down below. <laughs> Thank you.